I'm Tim Scott. I'm standing in a very wet field in Barton. Uh, the reason I'm here, we're in year four of a five-year project looking at a project about black grass control. Here at Barton, it, it's generally a very heavy clay soil and our number one weed uh, is black grass. When I say number one weed, it's a very difficult weed to control. And as a result of having the high black grass populations, we've had a very close relate working relationship with Syngenta over numerous years um, trying to control black grass. We had an absolute massive, massive black grass population and the uh, counts suggested there would have been about a seed shed of about 65,000 seeds per square metre. Uh, and that is an awful lot of black grass. The main thing about the site is how to manage black grass uh, and funnily enough often the herbicides aren't a massive factor. It much comes down to cultivation, to different drilling techniques, all very exciting things that for me as a farmer I find very very interesting. A lot, along with the um, with the bigger trials, there's, there's lots of more sort of innovation trials. Uh, some are smaller. One in particular is something that's behind me over there where you can see a tent and it's looking at uh, the f influence of moisture on how pre-emergent sprays work. And clearly the cover's there to stop some of the plots from having any moisture at all and just see what the interaction is. Because For me, there's been many things I've learned. I think that the two that spring to mind is one is the importance of understanding black grass when it comes to dormancy. Um, because, and you need to tailor your application of herbicides according to do dormancy. Mind. But the second one is actually looking how the crops finish off because on heavy land we're very lucky we do grow heavy crops of wheat and what has been very interesting that throughout the growing season the generally the min till has always looked the best then the ploughing and finally the direct drilling it's three weeks before harvest looking at the state of the crops how they're ripening and for each of the last three years the wheat in, in the ploughed area has died off early and it's shown just literally signs of senescence. The min till to a lesser extent and the direct drilling has kept green for much longer. Um, one of the things that I think farmers love so much about the site and I'm, I'm flattered that so many enjoy it and I'm told that each of the last years we've had about 500 visitors is it's real farming. Right. This is actual getting your feet dirty. My Wellingtons are certainly very dirty today um, and that's what makes it interesting. It, it's a real farm experience. What is really exciting we've got a results meeting on the 3rd of December and we'll be looking at the three years worth of data. It'll be really exciting to come along and see the actual results because, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's a real site. Not many people would leave populations of several thousand plants a square metre um, to see how that population can change year on year. This differentiates us from many other farms, other trial projects and we're simply looking at the cumulative build-up or decline of black grass. What will be good at this um, results day is there'll be many people there, experts in the field, being able to answer questions, possibly even tailored to your farm, uh, I'll be there, no doubt moaning about the weather as I always do, uh, but it will be a really exciting day, but much more importantly it will be very informative.